Around 30 million internally displaced persons, refugees and asylum seekers live in Africa and that represents almost one third of the world's entire refugee population. Now the impact of conflict and violence as well as climate change is having a major effect on the continent and uh, today is day two of our Morning Live uh, co-anchor Leanne Manis' mission to Mozambique at the Maratane Refugee Settlement to cast the spotlight on the refugee situation in Mozambique and uh, other parts of Southern Africa. So let's take you now to Maratane where Leanne Manis is this morning. Uh, Leanne, you did promise yesterday that you would be taking us into a settlement and uh, please tell us more. A very, very good morning to you from Mozambique. And uh, today, as you said, we are coming to you from the Maritani Refugee Settlement. And this is not too far from where we were broadcasting yesterday. It's probably about 40 k's or so uh, outside the city of Nampula. And there is the settlement that has been uh, set up for those that are displaced, those that are particularly refugees. But what's quite interesting is that the surrounding communities also use the facilities that are set up here by the UN. HCR, which I do find quite fascinating. For instance, I mean, we thought we'd start off at the school for our, our sort of first glimpse into what actually happens. So literally about five minutes ago, all of the kids went into their classrooms. So this is the classroom facilities that you'll see. But I think what, what can amaze you is that what you're looking at, it educates. And at this school, I mean, it's quite incredible, 2,000 and uh, 2,835 learners come to the school. Now, it's both the refugees and the host communities. Now, something else that I wanted to show you, I mean, they've got about 90 kids in one class, so that's quite, it's, it's, it's quite incredible, I must say. You spoke about how climate change is affecting uh, the continent, Mozambique, the world in general, and this is an idea of what happened. This was during the cyclone. The roof was completely blown off. This was destroyed. This was one of their classrooms that unfortunately is no more. All you've got left are the remnants of the chalk that's on the blackboard behind us. So, you know, this is what we talk about. And now subsequently, because of this, uh, obviously the teaching has to take place outside now. So a lot of the kids sit on the desks there. I mean, just uh, around the, 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 the corner over here, you can see even more of the devastation of the cyclone from these desks that uh, are just piled up behind this classroom that has been absolutely devastated. So, I mean, this is really just the picture that one can give you in terms of what happens with climate change. And uh, they are, they just, they, they, they weather patterns that absolutely destroy, they destroy infrastructure, they destroy facilities, and most importantly, they destroy lives and destroy lives of the most vulnerable people. But this is, this is the school, so people are coming in, and I think one of the, the interesting things that we can tell you is that they, of course, have school. I mean, you, th you kind of ask yourself, how do you possibly uh, fit 2,800 kids into one school? Well, they do it in two shifts. So you'll get the kids coming in in the morning, which we've just seen. They will learn until 1 o'clock. They go home, and then after that, of course, you've got the rest of uh, the, the kids that will come back a little bit later on. So. I want to actually take you a little further out into the camp now, but I thought that this was a great starting point just to show you the schools, the learning, and how you'll also find that a lot of the kids that uh, here integrate with those that are the Mozambicans. I mean, it was so interesting to see yesterday, and as we were walking around and meeting a couple of the families, we saw that there was a, a Mozambican lady, a beautiful lady. I have to tell you, the Mozambican women are magnificent. I'm just putting it out there, SK. It's, it's something to behold. But she had married one of the refugees that were in this camp. Uh, we're going to, in a very short while, talk to you about the, the kind of numbers of who are here, but predominantly from the DRC and from Burundi. But she married one of the uh, one of the refugees and she's living in here with her family and her kids. So, you know, it's uh, it's it's how the, the, the communities integrate and a lot of them come and use the school, which you saw. There is a secondary school as well. This is just the junior school uh, or the primary school and then the secondary school. So now we exit the school 
and you can already see the market setting up. So here's everybody selling their things. I mean, these are the mangoes. I know you guys were talking about the mangoes. So there's trees everywhere, little baby mangoes on sale here. Um, so this is what uh, you'll see the produce that people are selling in order to make a living. And uh, this, of course, is something that obviously his, his mom was baking and he's here selling it this morning. It's kind of like a peanut brittle. Uh, we've been told that it's, 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 it's peanuts and it's kind of a sweet dessert or a, a sweet boost for the day. But one thing that's interesting to see is that whatever it is, they've, they've been here for many, many years. The refugees that are here have been here for a very, very long time. So they've managed to set up communities. This is home now. You know, the, the chances of them ever going back to their, their country of origin is very, very slim. Um, the, the war is either still raging on in that country or where they come from everything has been destroyed and they have no means and no way of going home so this is now home and it will be for the foreseeable future in fact that leads me to my next guest who i'm really looking forward to having a conversation with and uh, uh, tarsise is our guest here and tarsise is going to talk to us a little bit about what it is what tarsise is uh ungusimuni did i get your surname right it's good. It's, he's a field officer from uh, Kulima. Kulima is, of course, one of the implementing partners with the UNHCR. So nice to be with you, Tassisa. Thank you for being with us. Yeah, thank you very much. Good. Yeah. Talk to us. We're going to walk a little bit, if that's okay, and talk, and just get an understanding of the camp. Talk to me about how long have you been here for? Because I know you are a refugee as well. Yeah, I'm a refugee from Burundi. Yeah. And I arrived here in 2012. Today it is my tenth year being here in Maritan. Yeah. yeah. So this is kind of now. This is this is your home. Do you ever think you'll go back to Burundi? Uh, no. If I get a chance to stay here, I would like to stay here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you find, well, let, let's first speak about the, the, the refugees that are here. So obviously you're from Burundi and funnily enough, the next guest we're speaking to is also from Burundi. But the numbers, what countries, um, residents or, or citizens are here mostly? Uh, here in Maritana, we have Congolese, Burundians, Rwandese, uh, people from Uganda, from Ethiopia, from Somalia, South Sudan, and Angola, I think, okay. yeah. But mostly, mostly the ones that you are referring to are the ones from uh, the DRC. Those are the ones that are, are mostly uh, here. But the kind of lives that you lead, I mean, this is, this is what it looks like. This is every day, this is your life, this is, this is a refugee camp. What has it been like for you? What, the? what has it been like for you living here? Yeah, I, I try to, to do different activities uh, in order to earn a living here. One of the activities, that, this work that I'm doing with the Kulima as a mentor um, in the project, but I also make business of uh, chickens. I also do farms. I try to produce tomatoes, um, maize, and other crops. Yeah. yeah. The, this is also things that other people here yes. do in yeah. order to earn a living here. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're actually going to a, a lady's house who does exactly that. She's, she's got the, the chickens and she was a beneficiary of this project, which you'll see and we'll tell you about. But what are the, the concerns of the community here? Because I know life is not easy. Yeah. It's, it's not easy here. But okay. this, is, this is now home. Yeah. A greater concern of the people here, uh, you know, we come from the region of Great Lakes, which has been in wars during many years, and uh, many people do not uh, think about going back there, and uh, they don't also have the, uh, they are not sure of staying here as well, so they need a, a durable solution to, to clearly know about their future, yeah. And, you know, what was quite interesting was that we were speaking to a lady yesterday who was hoping that she would be one of the chosen families that will be able to go to Canada or America, but that's not the case. I mean, it's almost like you, you, you realize you have to do the best that you can here. Yeah. Yeah. 
Only 1% of refugees ever get to be relocated to something like America or Canada. Yeah, I also believe that it is not possible for everybody to be, to, to be resettled in America and yeah. Canada. Yeah. Uh, be, because I have no, never seen that. Yeah. But, okay, refugees desire that would be like that. Yeah. But uh, we also think about uh, a different case if it is impossible to go there to have, to, to have a, a way of earning life here where we are. And uh, if it were possible to have a permanent residence and uh, to be assisted on the way how, of how to begin a life, this would be very good because wherever a man is, he should be working and yeah. life and then continues to sustain the family in order to ensure that there will be a future for the children and the, the, yeah. the, all the descendants. Well, man and woman, because the ladies work exceptionally hard, I have to tell you. And, and this is, this is the, the, the lady whose house we are at at the moment. Please tell her thank you for allowing us to come here. And uh, we visited her yesterday. And inside there, I'm not sure if we have enough light to show you, but that's where she keeps her chickens. She had about 300 of them, or 600, was it 600? 300. 300. Now they've gone. She's only got a few and she's waiting for more and she sells them. So that's, 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 her, that's her job. And and, and she does very, very well. But we thank you. We thank you for talking to us and, and helping the community because I think what you do helps the community a lot. It really does. And the, and the program is very, it's very important. Sure. Yeah. Uh, what we do is very important for all these, those who receive the, the program because there are others who do not like to receive thinking that this will impair, uh, will impair the uh, process of resettlement. But those who are convinced that, that is, it is important that they may do something here where we are, are beneficiaring many things because they receive money or others receive other items. So they do activities, they get a living, so they can build a house, their, their houses, they can buy foods, they can buy clothes, they can buy mat school mater materials yeah. for their children. Yeah. So th th this is a part is very important. Indeed. Yeah. yeah, and I think that if you can talk to a beneficiary, he really can uh, um, testify that yeah. is very important. Well, Tarsis, thank you so much for talking to us. And we did, we spoke to two of those beneficiaries yesterday. Uh, one of them is here, sorry, what is Madame's name, her name? Her name is uh, Hasha Tomas. Hasha Tomas. Hasha Tomas. This is our, our, our lady that was uh, showing us around yesterday and showing us her chickens. Listen, I held a chicken for the first time yesterday. That was, <laughs> it wasn't fun. She's laughing at me because she was. But I don't know if you're going to see it as we say goodbye to you. Uh, do we have lights here? So I don't think we can show it. But here's the, this is it, you know, this is the business. And, and, and this is one of the lucky ones that's been able to, to get this and qualify for a project where she's able to uh, have the chickens and uh, sell them. She's only got a few now, as I said, but usually this place is full of them. And she's waiting for the new ones to come so she can sell them and make money, of course. But yeah, this is just to give you that inside glimpse into here. But when you come back to us in the next hour, we're going to actually move over deeper into the camp because where we were is really just the, by the school area and uh, the hustle and bustle there. But we're going to go into a much more densely populated area. And specifically, we've got a treat for you in the next hour. We've got some incredible musicians and they come from Burundi as well but what I find so interesting is even though they're living in another country even though they've had to run from their country for whatever the case may be they still want to hang on to their culture and what they're all about and that's what this group does is that they're teaching the traditional Burundian music but they don't want to lose that and we're going to show it to you and chat to them as well we'll see you in the next hour